The following program is underwritten by the generous support of Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan Insurance. Since 1852, they have been assisting both businesses and individuals across the country secure the most comprehensive insurance products available. Associates of Glens Falls is proud to partner with Central Insurance Companies. Public Affairs Programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian-American food since 1922, and Store Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Store Tech, your technology, our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pennell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pennell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcome. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pennell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Most cybersecurity firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. Call the tonight's meeting to order, and it's a town of Queensbury uh, regular town board meeting. It's November sixteenth, twenty twenty. The time is seven o two p.m. And uh, I'll lead the pledge of allegiance. If you all please stand and join me. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, on the agenda, the first item is to go into a uh, local board of health. We have four items to deal with tonight, and is there a motion to move into the Queensbury uh, local board of health? So moved. Second. Moved by Councilperson Perone, seconded by Councilperson Prier. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Uh, we're in the uh, Queensbury Local Board of Health. We are going to shift item one to the last item because there's public comment, and I'll, I'll, I'll reserve that, and we'll get the other ones out of the way. So we're going to go to one, two. If you'll introduce that to the public, please, Rose. Yes, this is a continuation of a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of Roberta Kahn. Okay. Uh, originally, this is for a uh, septic system on 61 Knox Road. There was some concerns by a neighbor of uh, potential damage of tree roots and trees. So um, we met there, talked it over with the neighbor, talked it over with the uh, applicant and engineer for Roberta Cahan, who uh, owns 61 Knox Road. And um, we had a public hearing on this, and the public hearing is still open. But we've made some changes, and I think that the neighbors uh, will, will, the changes will be more to their liking. Instead of four variances, this proposed change only requires one variance, that the absorption bed be two foot from the uh, south side of the property line instead of the required 10 foot setback. So uh, if you want to elaborate, uh, Further, uh, Dennis? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm Dennis McElroy with Environmental Design, uh, representing Roberta Cahan for this uh, Board of Health wastewater variance for their property. Uh, as explained, this is a replacement wastewater system. Uh, the Cahans are an elderly couple thinking forward to a point of transfer at some point to their next generation. So they want to have a replacement system in place, at least approved and in place for construction as needed. So we've uh, provided a design on a tight area. It required some setback variances. And as indicated, uh, the neighbor to the north had some 
initial concerns about uh, trees that were along the property line. So in order to accommodate that, the Cahans have uh, chosen to a, a placement of the septic tank that would absolutely require a, a large tree removal on their property to avoid the some potential for damage to the root system of trees that are on the property line. So, you know, for the record, I'd indicate that those the owners have stepped up to do something that uh, would accommodate that other concern. So uh, that reduces the variances just to the property on the south side. And my understanding that the, the uh, owner to the south is uh, supportive of the proposal and um, they'd like to move forward with this revision to the application. Are any questions for the board before I return to the public area? No, I, Dennis, I don't know if you're aware that we got an email where the neighbor to the north said he's removing his objections that he was okay with all the changes. Great, thank you. Okay, is there anybody from the public that wishes to uh, speak to this uh, application for sanitary sewage disposal? Uh, it's a variance request and it's for Roberta Cahan at 61 Knox Road. Is there anybody here tonight that wishes to speak to them? Is there anybody uh, that's watching YouTube and you want to do the call in? You have to have caller ID, you have to be able to identify you. And uh, the number is very code 518-761-8225. Now, while I'm doing that, um, is there anybody who's watching this through Zoom? Please indicate your interest in speaking to this particular application for sanitary sewage disposal variants for Roberta Cahan on 61 Knox Road. One variance is being requested and that is the absorption field to be two foot from the south side property line instead of required 10 foot. Seeing no interest from Zoom, hearing no call-ins, nobody of the public present wishes to speak to this application. Uh, I'll entertain a, um, a motion to approve if it exists. So moved. All right, moved by uh, Councilperson Freer, seconded by uh, Councilperson Metterbeer. Roll call vote on this, please, Rose. Councilperson Freer. Yes. Perone. Yes. McGee is absent. Strau? Yes. And Medivir? Yes. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. The next two are to set the public hearing. Um, would you introduce <coughs> the first one, point three, as it's listed on our agenda item? It's a resolution setting a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of Michael Grasso. All right, uh, Tom Hutchins is the uh, agent and engineer for this uh, particular application, and they are asking for two variances uh, in the sewage disposal code, and that is variance one that the septic tank be placed three foot from the house instead of the required 10 foot setback. And the second variance is for the septic tank is 40 foot from the well instead of the required 50 foot setback. That's for the septic tank. Um, this is to set the public hearing on this application for December 7th. And this is for Mike Rosso, a 23 Rappaport Drive. And again, for setting the public hearing for December 7th. Is there a motion to do so? So, so. 
moved by Council First Brown. No second. Seconded by Council First Metabier. Roll call vote on setting the public hearing for Mike Grosso. Council Person Perot. Yes. Stroud. Yes. Metabier. Yes. And Freer. Yes. All right. Next is uh, agenda item 1.4. Resolution. And that too is to set a public hearing. Sorry. Go ahead. It's a resolution setting a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of Dave Barlow. All right, Dave Barlow lives on uh, 18 Ward Lane. Uh, that's a little lane uh, that is opposite Hannaford Road, and it's off of 9L over by Hannaford Road. And uh, what they are, what they would like to do because of their geographic conditions over there, is just put in holding tanks, two 1,500 gallon holding tanks. 18 Ward Lane, owned by Dave Barlow. This is a set of public hearing for this on December 7th. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Moved by Council Person Freer. No, second. Seconded by Council Person Medivere. Roll call vote. Setting this public hearing, please. Council Person Stroud. Yes. Medivere. Yes. Freer. Yes. And Farrell. Yes. Okay. Next is. 1.1 and uh, many members of the public are here to speak to this so that's why I put it last but we'll give you the opportunity to speak in a minute. Would you please introduce it to the public? This is a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of Chris Abel, Rockhurst LLC. All right, Abley. Abley rather. Yeah, well it's 10 Polk Road which is off of uh, Assembly Point Road and um, asking for two variances the absorption bed is to be five foot from the property lines to the required 10 foot setback and uh, 70 feet from Lake George instead of the required 100 foot setback we talked to the engineer in this application and they are going to try and engineer some changes but the uh, absorption system is a pure flow heat fever biofilter system. And, um, but there are probably going to be changes. So we're not going to act on this tonight. It's the agreement with the board, I think. Uh, but we do want to listen to what the public comments are. Uh, Dennis, I don't know if you want to speak to this at this time. I think Dennis left, actually. He left? He left. He left. Yeah. All right. Because he's gonna he's gonna do some work on this. But I haven't yet. Oh, oh John? Yeah. Problem, I know. Now I will give everyone the opportunity to speak to this. And so we have three formats going in our effort to try and be as open and transparent as we possibly can. One is we have the public and we have the public and they're socially distant and they have their masks on. If, if you're sitting down and you're socially distanced, you can have the option of removing your mask. If you come up here and you're by yourself, you can remove your mask, but you have to return it when walking around in the room. I also have a YouTube going on and a YouTube can do call-ins. Um, at the appropriate time, I'll mention when I would like you to do the call in. The call in is area code 518-761-8225. And then we also have a Zoom going on. It's set up as a webinar. And we have 18 attendees on that Zoom now. And there is an indicator if you wish to speak. A little blue hand usually goes up and gives me the indicator that you want to speak. I will give you the opportunity, but I'm going to go public with the present public first. All right. With members of the public who are here today, tonight, in this building, is there anyone who would like to speak to this application uh, from uh, Chris Abley um, for sanitary sewage disposal variants uh, for property located at 10 Polk Road? Carol, I believe you wanted to speak. She did get up first and then I'll allow others. 
Hi, my name is Carol Collins. Um, I live on Assembly Point. Um, and I don't want to go into the whole project. I think. Oh, sorry, Carol, can you do okay, that? take it off. Better recording. Yeah. Sorry. I would have put lipstick on. Um, <laughs> you look great. <laughs> okay. I think what I want to speak to is um, the performance of enhanced treatment systems. I think there's a little bit of confusion because they are uh, a, a well-performing system. Um, and I've heard the, the comment, do not let the perfect be the enemy of the good, to justify you know, putting in these systems, which I'm not opposed to an enhanced treatment system at all. But I want to uh, let you know what the shortcomings of these systems are, uh, and specifically, the shortcomings related to phosphorus. And I think all of you know that phosphorus is the uh, fuel generating source of algal blooms. And we'll get onto that afterwards, but it's certainly the limiting resource in Lake George that we all need to pay attention to. Um, and uh, it's really the only tool we have in, in protecting that environment. So the ETUs do a great job in uh, reducing things like biological oxygen demand, total suspended solids, and others, and that's great. But the big but is it doesn't remove phosphorus, okay? None of them do. That's the job of the soil absorption system, fully, totally. Uh, if you speak with engineers at PureFlow, uh, Claris Fusion, as I have, I have, you know, the information, I'm happy to share it with you, specifically, you know, they all agree, you know, that's, that's, they can't do that, it's a very difficult, expensive proposition, and they leave that up to the, the uh, soil absorption fields, and they strongly believe that the state's recommendations on trench lake length, uh, and soils are critical, and they should be observed at any at at all cost. So I want to let you know that because I just hear it over and over again that hey, these things do everything. Yeah, they do, you know, but not enough. This is a real critical issue in the in the New York City watershed you know, to make sure we preserve our soil absorption fields and. Uh, it should be in the Lake George watershed at all, uh, as well. So um, I wanted to make sure you fully understand that because I think we're seeing a lot more requests to compromise our soil absorption fields. I think there's a couple here tonight, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, specifically for this project where there is a a uh, require, request to set it sev within 70 feet of the shoreline. I, I think the same applicant actually got a variance for a 76 foot setback by the by the board uh, back in 2014. Um, and certainly this is not the precedent we want for a soil absorption field located this close to Lake George. We've seen in a, 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 a Ha hazardous algal bloom this year, or I guess we call it a harmful algal bloom. They used to be called hazardous. Um, located right there at that site, um, where actually there's a number of systems that are being examined. So I think we're should be particularly sensitive to this, not only for that reason, but if you look at the soil types. And anyone can do this, you know, you just get on the NRCS site. And um, we, we look at them and there's Messina soils and Charleston soils. One's, one's listed as poor for, for uh, sanitary systems. And the other one is listed as limited for so sanitary systems. So even with those soils, they're not going to do the same job as we need them to. Uh, in a in a in a better soil field. So I I don't want to I know I'm probably going to forget 
other things that I wanted to speak with you about here. But if I can impress upon you that this is all we've got for Lake George, is keeping these soil fields away from the lake. And 100 feet is recommended, and that's what we should keep it at. So I want to thank you for all the work you do. Right. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. There was somebody over here. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Lorraine Ruffing, and I live on Assembly Point. Um, I would like to make the following uh, statement um, about the uh, Polk Road property. Uh, this property is in what we call a critical environmental area. It's basically a wetland with two streams on either side of the property. And um, I believe uh, my presentation was uh, given to you and you can see the stream from the pictures. Uh, 16 trees have been removed from this property and four more are marked for cutting. Uh, some trees are within 35 feet of the lake. I understand a variance was given for the purposes of enlarging the existing road. However, the road is not going to go along the shoreline. And uh, the excessive tree cutting lakeside has limited the already minimal uh, absorptive capacity of this area as was just described by Carol. Uh, and this will res result in the increased outflows to the lake in the two streams that uh, go into the lake. Um, this increased outflow will go into a very shallow, still bay. And it was the site of the first HABS outbreak on Lake George on the 7th of November. And as of yesterday, November 15th, the halves were still visible in this bay. The halves uh, were not only on the east side of Assembly Point, that is in Harris Bay, but they encircled the entire perimeter of Assembly Point. I know because I kayaked this past Monday, um, that is the Monday uh, before, um, the entire perimeter. And there was film covering the water. As you know, when the toxicity reaches a certain level, and we have not been told by the DEC what the exact level is in Harris Bay, it can affect liver, kidneys, and the nervous system. The HABs can impact uh, humans and animals, not only when they drink the water, but if they inhale it because it's aerosolized toxins, um, it, or if they have direct skin contact, with the contaminated water when swimming or boating. So that would reduce our recreational use if we don't get our, um, our HABs under control. Uh, I see from the uh, sketches that there are two septic systems that are uh, positioned side by side, 70 feet from the lake. Uh, we don't know how many feet from the stream. Um, the effluent which would emerge from the poor flow models uh, or modules um, and disperse in the gravel pad. But this pad, as, as Carol explained, will be in a critical environmental area near the lake and near the stream. And what will be the absorptive capacity of this area since it has been denuded of many trees? Additionally, the pure flow system requires a pod for each bedroom. And I see three pods on the sketch and there are four bedrooms planned for the house. Um, Lastly, I guess, you know, what is the point of overhauling the town regulations and making them low impact development if we are going to continue to give a pass to high impact development? Uh, I think the Board of Health should take every step it can to preserve our drinking water. Um, therefore, I respectfully ask the town board and the Board of Health to reject this application and search for a more suitable solution for this critical environmental area. I believe others um, have uh, recommended such solutions, uh, such as uh, John Caffrey and Chris Nowitzki, and I think we would all be happy to discuss them in the future. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Lorraine. Yes, ma'am.
if I could hear you, I I recognize what you're saying. Wiping down the lights. Oh, wiping down the lights. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Lorraine Carbonine, and I live at 197 Assembly Point Road. Uh, we've resided there for six and a half years. Um, and I thank the board for allowing me to voice my concerns. This variance application comes at a time when we, the Assembly Point residents, are on high alert for water quality threats. Um, we are looking here at making accommodations to the Town of Queensbury regulations for on-site wastewater treatment systems. The property in question is a narrow lakefront lot and with two streams running roadside and along the back of the property, much of the lot often appears wet from our street view. It's certainly a fragile wetland that does not seem able to weather the development project that's proposed. Narrowing the view of this project down to the variance before us, diminishing the 100 foot setback significantly to the requested 70 feet is entirely too ambitious on a low wet lot. I question the two soil percolation tests performed in October of this year, which was done at the end of a very dry season. Was this the best time of year to perform these tests? Are they not supposed to be done during the wettest months of the year so we know their minimum capacity to perform and not the best case scenario? The results obtained five and six is this soil minimally able to perform. I would also ask the board to review the plan for this parcel of land in its entirety. There's another structure on this property. If construction is planned on that second lot overall, we'd be looking at two large square foot dwellings, two septic systems, two driveways, and the trees and vegetation removal to remove to allow all this to occur would be too much for this fragile, shallow bay to handle. The recent report just last week of a harmful algal bloom in the very bay that the property faces underlines the, th the threat to our water supply. There are approximately 50 lakefront homes along Assembly Point Road and Bay Parkway, and most obtain their drinking water year-round from the lake. Even with basic in-home water treatment systems, many are not capable of removing the toxins found in the HABs identified last week. I realize this is a completely separate issue, but the timing is incredibly noteworthy. Now is not the time for the town to be complacent or in any way soften the standards previously set for septic requirements. And I ask you to put the health and safety of all assembly point residents before the gain of one overly ambitious property development. I thank you. Thank you, Lori. I'm supposed to wipe this down like at the zone, like at the ZBA. I, I can't hear you. You're supposed to wipe this up down? Yeah, you, you're supposed to the last person. Um, John Caffrey from Caffrey and Flower in Glens Falls, representing Mr. and Mrs. Uh, John Kelly of Assembly Point Road. One second, please. John. John. Your Zoom has gone off. I don't know why it's offline. Supposed to make these public, so I want to make sure he's aware of it. Yeah, I know what it was. I plugged it in but didn't turn the switch on back there. <laughs> I'm glad you have a good monitor control board. <laughs> in any event, we do have two other. We have Look TV here. Public and we have YouTube. Yeah, I lost it. It's going to take me a little while to get together. Yeah, John, yeah. if you want to wait, already until I get Zoom back up. How long might it be? 
It'll probably be about five minutes. Well, it's up to you, whatever your protocol for meetings is. I don't know what I have to say. I want to get it on the record. I don't have to have an audience. <laughs> I did want to ask, um, I emailed a letter in at 5 o'clock. Did you all get actual copies of the letter that I sent to Caroline Barber? Okay. Yeah. I wanted to make sure because I did bring hard copies also in case you didn't. Sorry about the timing, but I just got onto this project recently. Do we need to get read in? You guys do um, we just acknowledge that we have them. You don't. You don't have to on any board. Okay. Some boards choose to, and that's where you think it's not. Yeah. Not required. Okay. Anymore. Thank you. But read it in. My letters are usually so long. I suggest well, that's why that's not read them. <laughs> The state made a lot of changes, but it never did anything about open meeting laws. So we have to <laughs> try and do what we're doing here tonight. Right? They made a whole lot of changes about open meeting laws. But we still have to do what we're doing tonight. Right. Yeah. Just me. Did they want me to use it? There it is. All right, sorry, I lost power on my laptop. We still have 11 participants. That's good. All right, John, if you would continue, and I'm sorry for um, forgetting to hit the switch. Uh, I understand what you said about the application being revised, but I would still, so I don't know what it ultimately look like, but I'd still like to make the major points. Um, there's no proof of hardship which is required by your code. Um, just They just didn't put any in. Uh, there's nothing that appears to be any proof of special circumstances, which is another criteria supposed to be met for a variance. Um, the variance, as the other speakers have pointed out, is potentially detrimental to Lake George, and I won't repeat what they've been saying about the harmful algae bloom. Um, so there is a, on the GIS system that the county maintains, uh, it does show a wetland on this property as well as on the adjoining Hogan property. It may or may not be an APA jurisdictional wetland, but regardless of that, that's not a good sign if you want to put in a septic system to have wetlands right there. It means your, soil, your water table is probably right at the surface. Um, and 
uh, as somebody else pointed out, the test pits were, were done in the fall rather than the spring when, at, when the water is the highest. Um, I, what I'd like to discuss, too, is that there's no proof that this is the minimum necessary variance or even that a variance for the setback from the lake is needed. Um, they could move it backwards away from the lake. Um, they could possibly share a system with the adjoining lot that the same person's also buying. There's a lot of alternatives that they haven't examined, which would make a variance unnecessary, and perhaps they could meet the setbacks from the lake. Um, the, um, as somebody pointed out, the septic system for the other lot is proposed to also be within 70 feet of the lake on the shall we say, west side, towards the little shallow bay there, I suspect that, that it's probably also within 100 feet of the lake on the other side, on the main part of Harris Bay, that, that part of the plans wasn't in the application materials. But that may need two variances. So there's a real problem there, I think, with the setbacks and, and the variances. Um, the, um, and there are alternatives, too. If you have smaller houses instead of the usual McMansions that everybody builds on Lake George once they buy an old camp, tear it down and build a McMansion. If they build a smaller house, they wouldn't need as big a septic system. Or if they only built one house on this property, this has been one property for over 100 years. If they only built one new house on it, they could still earn a reasonable return and you wouldn't have as much of a problem citing the septic system. You wouldn't have as much uh, other problems with overcrowding the site. I also have the impression that this thing is just being piecemealed. That first they go for the area variance from the ZBA for the road frontage issue, and I know that's in litigation and you're not gonna to wanna to discuss it, but that could throw this whole thing into, uh, back to the drawing board or back to square one. Um, but now we've got this variance. Obviously, there's going to be variance applications for the other property. They ought to bring the entire thing to the town at once so we're not dealing with little bits of it all at once without getting the big picture. Um, in fact, they told the ZBA there was no construction planned at this time, yet within a few weeks, they're out there digging and working on the drainage and cutting down trees and all that. So that was obviously misleading at best. Um, I'm sure Mr. Medivere noticed that himself going by there. Uh, the other issue I want to bring up is Seeker. There's no Seeker documentation in this file. Some variances are exempt from Seeker. They're type 2. That does not apply to this type of variance. Um, that's very clear, I believe, in the DEC Seeker handbook. And really the whole project, if you will, ought to go through a seeker review. It ought to be a coordinated review, even if it's an unlisted action, so that we can get the whole picture of what's being proposed here and how best to handle it. Um, and as somebody pointed out, this is in a critical environmental area created by the Lake George Park Commission. I'm not sure if the town also has one too, but anything within 500 feet of Lake George is a seeker critical environmental area. Um, so, uh, for all of these reasons, we think this application ought to be denied. Hopefully, they can come back with something that doesn't uh, create so many problems, but I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath. One, one thing I want to point out that applicants often say, well, this is going to be better what's, than what's there. The septic systems for those little cottages and stuff, I understand, are rudimentary at best. But that's not the point. It's about going forward making it the optimal system that does not require any variances, that is going to achieve treatment, that not just to compare it to what's there, because you can always say that. The point is to make it be the best possible system that will protect the lake. So, um, one, one last question. If this is going to be tabled, how are we going to get notice of future hearings? My clients don't happen to be adjoining property owners. We don't get notice. How do, how's that going? Is this going to be publicized somehow? Uh, well, it, it would be on the agenda when it comes back, if it comes back. Yeah, but, so we'd have to look at how, how far in advance are they posted? Do we have to re-notice, Council? Depends on the materiality of the modifications. If the modifications are material, then it would be appropriate to be noticed because 
material modification means that somebody that didn't have a concern under the current application might have a concern under the new materially modified application. Um, if the modifications are very minor, then you don't have to do that. We'll have to wait and see uh, what returns to us to see if the modifications are material. Did they give any indication what when they'd be coming back or what the changes might be? They suggested that the changes might be something more in accord with the code, uh, but they're going to investigate different possibilities. Thank you. Is there anybody else present tonight that wishes to speak to this uh, sanitary sewer disposal variance? Yes, sir. Please come forward. Identify yourself for the, matter, for the record. Yes, my name is Robert Carbonine. I am a resident of 197 Assembly Point Road. Uh, good evening, Supervisor Strau and members of the council. Um, I would like to go on record that I am opposed to the application for septic variance by Chris Abley, the managing member of Rockhurst LLC at 10 Polk Road in Queensbury. Uh, variants are granted for hardship reasons, health, growing families, disabilities, etc. This is not the case in this situation. Rockhurst LLC has purchased this property with the intent to subdivide and build two new large homes of high value. This is purely for personal financial gain. The property was purchased knowing that a site plan review and variances would be needed. This was a gamble that Rockhurst LLC was willing to take with no guarantees of accomplishing their goal. Page four on the application for uh, septic uh, for variance says, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance. The answer is it could be achieved by changing and or reducing the footprint of the home and location of the driveway. If the septic system was moved to the side of the driveway, it would be more than 100 feet from the lake and 10 feet from the property line. Uh, question three on the application states whether requested area variance is substantial. I feel the answer is yes, a 30% reduction in distance to the lake and a 50% reduction in a property line setback is substantial. On that application, question four is whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect on the environment. Canal Bay is extremely shallow with poor circulation. It was one of the first sites to report an algal bloom. We need to plan not just for today, but to anticipate the potential long-term negative impact of this project. Since there is no periodic septic inspection program in place, for waterfront residences, what if this system is not adequately maintained? Peat in the bioreactor needs to be replaced periodically. If the present or next owner is neglectful, neglectful that missing 30 foot of buffer becomes massively important. Question five on your application states whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. Well, yes. If the property was left as one parcel and not subdivided, a septic variance would not be needed. Mr. Abley and Rockhurst LLC are not good stewards of Lake George. Many trees have already been cut down on the property, which are critical to absorbing water and nutrients. This also has a negative impact on the wetlands that are on the property. In light of the recent uh, hazardous algal bloom that produced toxins in the water around Harris Bay, this past week is documented by the DEC. Now is not the time to be relaxing standards. My family and all the other families that draw their drinking water from the lake have a right to safe drinking water. This project, if approved, will become part of the problem we are now facing. Approving this application is a step in the wrong direction and possibly sets a precedent for similar variances in the future. Please do not approve this application. And just a, a quick addendum, I did some research this past week and I was trying to figure out, is there something I could do in my home to protect my family from these toxins? These toxins are organic compounds, okay? They cannot be filtered out with a micron filter. They cannot be absorbed with a charcoal filter. The only way to get these toxins that are neurotoxins out of the system is to have a reverse osmosis 
water filtration system, which I looked into. A company to do the project in my home is a $10,000 expense. I don't think a lot of people have that type of budget available to them. And anything less than that is exposing us to these neurotoxins. You cannot boil them out. You can't chlorine them out. They're there, period. The only way to get them out is through reverse osmosis. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other member of the public present wish to speak to this uh, Uber variant application? Yes, ma'am. My name is Beverly Posey, and I live on Assembly Point. Um, good evening, Supervisor Strau and members of the council. Much has been written, and so I shall not repeat any of those statements of grave concern. My family has been at 66 Bay Parkway, Assembly Point, since 1953. We have safely used the water unfiltered until 20 years ago when we installed an ultraviolet water filter system. At that time, it was evident that the water quality was declining, and we continued to see this decline to the point where the ultraviolet system is no longer capable of protecting our health, nor is in the sitting and reporting of harmful algae blooms, is it safe to use the water in any way? Swimming, boating, fishing, or any of the activities we've enjoyed for more than 60 years. So I ask, with the evidence that has been presented, that this board, who has been the leader in the property transfer law, fertilizer setback law, reducing salt on roads, not give a variance that clearly would be a threat to public health. The HABs are along the property shoreline as seen, photographed and reported during the last eight days. And finally, what impact will this have on the economy where tourism is the lifeblood of the lake and the communities in the entire watershed if we continue to grant variances with which impact the water quality? Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you, Beverly. And if you would, yeah, clean up the microphone again for me. Thank you. Anybody else present tonight wish to speak to this application? Yes, ma'am. You have to come up to the mic because it all has to be recorded. Many neighbors sent in letters. Um, You're Lorraine Carbonine. I'm Lorraine Carbonine, yes. And I know that many of my neighbors sent in letters, um, people that weren't able to be here. Will, will they all be read by all the whole board? No. No? I'm not going to read them. Oh, not tonight. I just mean, will everyone yes, read them? Yes, we will read them. Okay. <laughs> but I thought you meant publicly, and there's quite a few. But Rose, in a little while, is going to go through and kind of give a summary of what we've received so far. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else present? I just have a question. Do you have the letters to put into the record? The, the letters will be a, ma a matter of the record. Will they be put into the minutes? Versus the summation. The answer to the question is that the last two questions that have been raised are number one, all letters that are submitted are part of the public record. Um, they don't, there's no requirement that they be read aloud. And I would not foist upon the town clerk's office the responsibility of summarizing. I think that's a little, um, that would be, I'd be concerned about that because. You know, the, the, some of the letters are long. Um, Mr. Caffey acknowledged the length of his letter. His would be extraordinarily hard to summarize, I think, not a criticism. 
Um, I think if you want to town clerk to make note of what letters have been received from whom, you could do that, not required, but they're absolutely all letters received as part of the public record, absolutely. What Rose was going to do is state basically who we received them from and whether they're for it or against it. That's it. You you don't think that's needed or? I know for sure that that's not needed. Hmm. Is there any harm in doing that? Um, only that I've been to public meetings where um, people legitimately tried to characterize something as in favor or opposed and it wasn't really either and it wasn't accurately characterized because sometimes the letter can say at the beginning, we have concerns and then express the concerns. And if you characterize that letter as opposed, that may not be a reasonable characterization. That's my concern. All right, so what Rose will do is just uh, list who has sent in information on this particular topic, right? Just say the names and we'll get to that later then. Okay. Let me go through this. Is there anybody else here present that wishes to speak to this application? All right. Is there anybody watching YouTube? You're welcome to call in and then I'm going to go to Zoom. So uh, we have 14 attendees and those of you that came back, uh, what happened is uh, I used my laptop and uh, I lost power on my laptop. So we're back. And we didn't conduct any business until we got back on. Um, so if there is anybody watching this through YouTube and like to call in, there you go, 518-761-8225. And Peter, uh, I believe that we have some people calling in. Okay. Oh, good. Uh, all right, so 761-8225. That phone number's on. Anybody that's watching this on YouTube I can also see the phone number, right? All right. Uh, I'm just going to go in the order. Florence, Connor, can you hear me? Unmute yourself. Hello? Yeah, Laura. I had asked that my letter be read at this meeting, this evening. Um, we're not going to read them, are we? How about if somebody requests that we read them? Not obligated to, Ken. If you want, you're not obligated to. If your concern, your concern would be then if every single person requests their letter be read, you shouldn't treat people differently. It's up to the board. Laura? We're not going to read them because we feel we have to read all of them and they're really numerous. Can you please summarize your thoughts for us? I would rather not summarize it, but I would like to say that I hope that if these letters are compiled together, that they are read because when only receive one letter it goes to one person and it's very easy to put it in a file and just say oh let's get that for the next let's get to that later or that will we'll not bother with that before I have I'm holding up a folder and in this folder is the correspondence we've gotten today basically today we're not going to read that for the record. But if you'd like to make a comment and share your thoughts with us, we would welcome them. All right, I feel that I would try to shorten remember what I said. Um, this was a wonderful lot. It was a unique lot that this gentleman able was he was so fortunate to be able to buy it. Then he tends to, he said he was going to build his own home, and I was quite excited for him. And he came, he came in and asked for one thing, now he's come and asked for another. And he also
also by subdividing the lot, he's made uh, he's made a problem for himself. It's a self-created problem. And also, I just want to compliment the town of Queensbury for the many things they've done to protect the lake. You know, they've got the transfer law, they, and many of the other towns are now saying that they would like to have it. And the salt has been reduced. There's so many things that we have done, but we often give the little things a slide. And this is one of the little things. This is one of the few feet here or there. That few feet makes a big difference way down the line. You may put in a wonderful system today, but like all of us, it gets older and it gets a little weaker and maybe it's not taking care. So I think that we should be very careful to make sure that we stick to the rules we've made because they were made for a reason. Um, I'm sorry I don't have my paper in front of me. I could sooner um, combine some of my thoughts, but I just feel that it's time we stop giving away the things that make us safer and make the lake as pure as we can do it. it it's, a, it's a struggling lake right now. I've been there for 71 years. I know the difference of what it was and what it is, and it makes me very unhappy. Thanks for Please give me a All right, thank you. And Rose, that was Florence Connor, C O N N O R. Okay. I, I have that, and each board member was presented with a okay. copy. All right, Florence, thank you. Thank you. All right, Jackie, next in line, J E A I I I, or Jeff the Third, I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Can you hear me okay? Yes, please. Would you give me your name, please? Yes, uh, I'm Dr. John Kelly, a resident of 241 Assembly Point, a resident of 255 Assembly Point, and the owner of over 10 properties, uh, commonly known as Bellwood, off of Bay Parkway, which we're keeping uh, quite natural. Um, my attorney, um, John Caffrey, I think, did a a wonderful job of summarizing uh, our point of view on all of the legalities and coding issues. But um, I wanted to personally show up as a scientist, an engineer, and a uh, resident and user of the Center for the Lake for over 67 years. Not quite as long as Florence, but almost. And um, I think there are a number of issues with this application. Uh, not the least of which, technically, the applicant has not shown that this is not that financial work. And I won't repeat all the comments from the previous speakers, but to summarize in my simple few words, this is a bad plan with bad timing, and the applicant has shown bad behavior already with respect to destruction of that lot. So I strongly urge and request that the board deny this request. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. You got that, Dr. John Kelly? Anybody else on the phone? Chris Levesky. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Supervisor Stroud, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll be brief. I think a lot of my comments have already been said, but there are numerous concerns regarding the application and lack of supporting information, justifying the variance, speakable, alternatives are available, information lacking on important natural resources required by the town to be shown and possible segmentation issues. And I encourage the board during the deliberation to uh, remember the findings that you need to uh, adhere to under 136.18. Um, that the application contains no information that there are 
special circumstances or conditions that prevent the strict adherence to provisions of Part 1 of 136. Um, and it justifies that this, uh, the need of this variance. I think uh, Dr. Collins talked about the reduction of the uh, separation to the soil or to the length in the soil and the impact that that will have. The application contains no information that the variance is not be detrimental to the purpose of Part 1 or to other adjoining properties or to the plan of the policy <coughs> that we have. We know uh, that there are wetlands on the property as mapped by the uh, Warren County GIS. The failure to provide adequate uh, subsurface soil investigations is required by the town. But again, as uh, is also mentioned, <coughs> the policy of the town is forth on septic transfers on the wastewater management district. Clearly, the town is the leader. And finally, the application fails to justify that the variance is necessary for the reasonable use of the land. Any the minimum variance required, the authority has been spoken to. Um, so I would encourage the town to deny the application as submitted. We understand that there are proposed provisions coming on, and uh, we really encourage the town to be very scrutinized anything that comes forward. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. Scott Newman, can you hear me? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Scott. Um, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, I did submit written comments, but I'd like to uh, make a statement and, and I will uh, shorten it, uh, shorten what I had written to you. Uh, um, I'm uh, Proposing the 30 foot variance uh, that's been requested. Um, this 100 foot requirement helps to protect the lake from nutrient loading and seepage from septic systems. And the soil around the septic system, as, as Kevin mentioned earlier, acts as a filter and uh, is able to absorb the effort. However, that ability degrades over time. So the distance is important to protect water quality, and that's why the town has a 100-foot setback requirement. Distance is merely a layer of protection, and reducing that distance reduces the protection and increases the risk of effluent the lake over time. And I have uh, not uh, as many years as Lawrence, and not as many years as John Kelly, but I did just spend my 60th summer on Assembly Point and um, have come to love the area and uh, it's a perfect place to be with the family and, and enjoy the quality of the water and um, it's also a recreational and economic asset for the town and as the town well knows and Assembly Point residents well know the property taxes are very high on Assembly Point and that's because of the lake and the water quality. And um, if that water quality degrades, the values go down, assessments go down, and rateables go down. And uh, this is not to complain at this point about taxes, but just to show that water quality is also a matter uh, that can affect the town's budget. Uh, I also point out in, um, regarding the hazardous algae bloom that was mentioned uh, a number of times uh, tonight that uh, I was advised that the Jefferson Project has uh, installed a monitoring device in, device in Harris Bay. And that's an indication of their concern about the uh, water quality. And I think this was recently done in, in response to the hazardous algae bloom uh, that, that was mentioned. Um, and also mentioned the property includes wetlands and a meandering stream. And the shoreline is very long, and most of it is on a narrow peninsula that curves around to the shallow cove that Mr. Corbinian had mentioned. And the, the cove is warmer than uh, other areas of the shoreline, and um, there's visible vegetation 
at least during the summer. Um, and since the property is low lying, effluent is more likely to seep into the lake. And if the uh, septic field is close, or, or in this case, proposed 30 feet closer than normally required, that because of the nature of the property the, um, and, and the destruction of the tree, uh, the nutrients uh, are more likely to flow into the pole than into the other side of the, I guess that would be the east side of the peninsula. Um, and so the real question is whether this is absolutely necessary for this fragile shoreline. And, um, I just wanted to join in with the other assembly point residents and ask that the town uh, administer their uh, regulations as as they've been intended. And, and the fact that so many people have spoken out and submitted comments off season, I mean, most people are not up there now. And uh, during a pandemic and shortly before Thanksgiving, I think it's an indication that of the concern uh, for the lake and um, the quality of the water. And so I, I just ask that the town take a good look at, at the application and at the uh, options that are otherwise available and, and that they do right by Lake George. And, and at this stage, deny the 30 point variance request. I just want to thank you very much for this opportunity. All right, Scott, thank you. Scott Dubin, D-U-B-I-N. Anybody else on the bill? Zoom change is almost daily. Lisa Adamson, are you there? Lisa Adamson, Lisa, we can't hear you and I can't connect with you. You have a form of Zoom that the Newton will not deal with, even making you a co host. Can you call in, Lisa, if you're watching? Call in at area code 518-761-8225. Lisa Adams.
All right, Lisa sent me a message. I was just going to suggest that we offer the applicant an opportunity to meet with the task force to create this into a showcase project of what we could do right on that process. All right, thank you, Lisa. Anybody else on Zoom? Has the system been approved by the New York State Department of Health? No, and they don't believe they have to. We operate as the local board of health, and then it goes from us to the Adirondack Park Association if we do deal with it. Agency. Adirondack Park Agency. Agency, thank you. Another one asking for a fast supper, other. I don't know the last name. Asking for my father, Fred Hart, Zoom back, and everybody that's asked to talk has talked. And we haven't had anybody call in. Um, so, Rose, would you go through as to just tell us who has sent us something? No matter the record. Yes, I have 11 letters. They are from Joan Anderson, Nancy Burke, Lawrence Connor, Charlie Crew. Scott Dubin, Mike Kelly, Brian Hogan, Beverly Posey, Lorraine Ruffing, Chris Nowitzki, Lake George Waterkeeper, and John Caffrey representing John and Honey Joe Kelly. Um, they will all be on file in the town clerk's office. All right, thank you. And like I said, most of these we got this afternoon or even as early as minutes for this meeting. So that's going to take us a while. We will give due diligence. This board will read through the material that you have sent and you have shared with us tonight. And I very much appreciate everything that you said. And it will go into consideration. I'm not sure where this will go. We're not going to act on it today. Any other thoughts on behalf of the board before I move out of the board of health? Okay. Then I'll, um, I'll entertain a motion to move out of the local board of health. So moved. Moved by Councilperson Perone, seconded by Councilperson Freer. All those in favor of moving out of the local board of health, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right, it's unanimous. And I just want to remind you that the public hearing is left open. So any further comments will be welcome. Email, snail mail, whatever. Okay, and I did take lots of notes, okay? Next, we have a, another public hearing. A public hearing, if you'll introduce that to the public rows. Public hearing on a local law to amend town code provisions relating to water and sewer services and charges. All right. In this resolution, and there is a public hearing on this tonight, um, is to do several things. A, and, and we do have the superintendent of water and director of wastewater with us, Chris Harrington's here tonight. So this is to um, discuss, eliminate the wastewater department's involvement in constructing sewer laterals. It will become the sole responsibility of the property owner, code sections 136-55 and 136-95 would make that clear. Again, to make it the responsibility of the property owner to install the lateral. 
Another change being proposed is allow the wastewater director to waive the requirement for separate building sewers at uh, code section 136 through 56 dash 56 sorry and uh, i'm going to ask him to explain that so he'll come down here in a minute the third provision is to provide the town board provide that the town board may make changes to sewer rents by resolution upon five days public notice. Code sections 136, 137, and 136 137.2. And the fourth proposal, in, generically, is allow water service to be discontinued upon resolution of the town board without a hearing. Code section 173-29. And so we have a public hearing on this tonight, but I would ask the Water Superintendent Wastewater Director, Chris Harrington, to please come forward and elaborate a little bit more on the changes in the town code that you are proposing to the town board and we are proposing to the public. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, we had a uh, workshop on this about six weeks ago. Um, the uh, the first thing that John mentioned is about the, uh, we want to just clean up the code a bit. We want to kind of mimic what we do over the years, um, particularly with house connections. Um, house connections are a little bit different for sewer than water. House connections are the sole purvey of the uh, homeowner, and we have never gotten involved installing the house connections, nor do we. So, uh, uh, there's a couple of things. We don't have the crew really available to do those. Those get very messy. Don't want to get involved in that. And if a contractor, we hired a contractor, that would be prevailing wage, would cost about 30% more. So we have never been involved in establishing, uh, uh, installing house connections. We've just uh, reviewed um, plans. We've issued permits and we've done inspections. So I just want to make sure that the code actually represents what we do. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. That's just cleaning up the code. Um, second thing is about building connect, uh, doing sewers for buildings on a property. If you have four different buildings, each building is supposed to be directly connected to the sewer. Um, that's a very high mark. So I want the code to be a little easier so that with the help of council, we can have something written where we can make sure that if that, uh, property is subdivided in the future, that there is something in the deed that spells out who's responsible for what. So they have these issues down the road where, oh, well, the sewer's broken, we have to go on their piece of land and it becomes a real bloody mess. So this is to uh, have the uh, private homeowner or property owner to uh, put the deed together in such a way that uh, eliminates uh, uh, problems down the road. So I think the way council drafted it was, uh, was appropriate. And I think uh, we should give the property owners a, a little more leeway uh, from that stringency of the code. There's particularly one property on Corinth Road that a realtor asked me about, and I'm like, well, that's a little difficult because right now you have to put two grinder pumps in. You know, a grinder pump costs about $10,000 each. That's 20 grand they'd have to put in instead of maybe doing something that, that uh, you know, could meet, um, you know, future requirements in case something did happen. It could be written indeed. You just want the, the, the property owner down the road, when they buy something subdivided, know, hey, look, you have to look at this this lateral here and that you guys share, like share a driveway, something like that. So that's part of that code. Um, the sewer rents one, we want to match a little more like water. Water you can, water and sewer are very different. The law uh, um, uh, treats those very differently. What we want to do with the uh, sewer rents, instead of codifying it, we want to establish them as we do a water where you can do by resolution. The tricky part with sewer rents, you still need a hearing. Okay, it's not going to be a public hearing, doesn't be codified, but you still have to have a hearing. So we're trying to make it uh, match water and, and uh, the wastewater rents. Let's try to make them as close as we can. That still requires a hearing. Um, and the last one is discontinuation of water service. Um, people will still have due process. You can only do it by resolution. You will see, the board will see, in case we do feel that somebody should have their water service discontinued, uh, we, will, we, have, we will reach out to them. We'll give them every chance imaginable um, before we have a ask the board for a resolution to discontinue water service, they will be notified. They will have the opportunity to come to sit down with the board during a session like this and explain why 
they believe were were, were uh, being uh, unfair in discontinuing water service. So I, I know, George, you had a little bit of issue about due process there. So I do believe that they still will have due process. But we eliminate the hearing part, which becomes very laborious. Uh, we went through this one time, and it, it really turned into yeah, their attorney, our attorney, hearings, this, that, and the other thing. And, and I feel that a, a resolution, um, after they've given so many chances, would, would, would do the same thing. Some towns don't have anything. I think they could just shut the water off without it's not even code. Uh, Gilderland just had discontinued water, <laughs> you know, I guess, to purvey the water superintendent and shut the water off, just like they did in Chinatown. Uh, the movie Chinatown where the water superintendent had all the power. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, so those are just, you know, clean up the code, makes things a little more smooth, uh, flow a little uh, uh, more smoothly. Um, so I asked the board to consider those. And if the public has anything to say, I'd, I'd, I'd welcome to hear what they may have to say. Flo. Now, okay. well, Flo seems to be the core of your whole Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> a question from the town board? All right, I may ask you to come back if we get some questions that sure. you need your expertise on. Okay. Okay. So the public hearing is now open. So anybody that wishes to speak to the proposed changes in the town code that we have described, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to speak to them. Is there anybody present who would like to speak to any of the uh, changes in the code that we just described? No one present. Anybody from YouTube like to call in at area code 518-761-8225. Anybody on Zoom? There's no interest on behalf of the public to speak to the proposed changes. I'm hoping that they think uh, that they think that they're pretty practical changes we're offering to our town code. I have to think they're pretty practical. John, I, I do have a, I have a question for Chris. Can um, because this came up in L.A. where. Uh, so, can you give me a, a couple of examples on w why you why you would recommend and we would pursue um, discontinued water? Um, meter man put in a meter. They find out they have a connection before the meter. We ask them to remove it. They give us a hard time. They don't want to remove it. We say you have to remove it. So that goes back and forth. Um, where, we, where we see that is with people that water the lawns. Yeah. They break in before the meter. Yeah. Okay. Another one might be an uh, old meter we want to get into. You know, a meter that's uh, um, used its uh, beyond its useful life or we want to put a, a radio read on it. You know, we can't get in. We can letters and put the radio read on so that we can read it automatically. We've had one, one uh, property owner doesn't like the stance of a certain town board member with regards to a certain uh, project in town. You know, and we can't get in because of that reason. They're trying to link it. Um... um uh, not having a backflow preventer in. They have a well. They have municipal water. Um, meter men. This is where it happens a lot when the meter men go in to to to, to once we get in to 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 you know change meters out or or, or problems. You know, they were the meter men go looking around, make sure in the back there's no backflow preventer that's needed or or uh, outdated meter or again pretty much the the big one is having that 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 hose bib before the meter. Okay. And and it, uh, my question to council is, uh, you know, this this came up in L.A. where they just decided because they were having parties for against the COVID violations, they were shutting off water and power. Has there been any determination that that's not a good idea? Um, I don't know what you mean by determination. We're not aware of court decisions, but as the superintendent described, there are some due process elements built into this. Not the least of which is that in order for the town board to adopt an order, it has to happen in an open public town board meeting. There are also provisions in there about thirty days notice of that order, time to comply, and the like. Thank you. Okay, welcome. 
further questions for the town board? Is there anything more for the public? I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion to approve the amended town code. I'll introduce. Motion made by Councilperson Metabier. I'll second. second. By Councilperson Brown. Roll call vote on this, please. Roll. Councilperson Metabier. Yes. Breer. Yes. Perone. Yes. And Strap. Yeah. Uh, next, we have resolutions. We have 13 resolutions before us. And I go through and I describe all 13 of the resolutions. The public knows what they are. And if you have any concerns, uh, I will give you an opportunity to share your concerns or thoughts with us on those resolutions. Now, if you have a thought on some town issue, that you want to share with the town board, but it has nothing to do with the resolutions, I will give you that opportunity. A privilege of the floor. It'll be toward the end of the meeting. This part of the meeting, however, is just on the resolutions. So, if you introduce resolution 4.1, Rose. The resolution reappointing John Mossing to the Town of Quincy Recreation Commission. All right, we have a great recreation commission, and John Mossing is one of those individuals that helps make it as great as it is. We appreciate the fact that he's willing to re up for that position. Um, and thank you, John Mossing, and uh, the town board will consider that as resolution 4.1. 4.2. Resolution amending resolution number 354 2020 to correct capital project number. All right, this was a mistake, and we've already discussed the adaptive signal control technologies capital project. Uh, we have uh, a grant that's going to look in the feasibility of, of uh, using adaptive signal control technologies in the Quaker Aviation Road corridor going between. Uh, Lower Warren or River Street, as, as it is in that junction where Quaker Road comes out, all the way up to exit 19. The adaptive control technologies will monitor queuing, flow of traffic, speed of traffic, and manage the whole system to maximum efficiency. There are other places that are using this. We have grant money. Thanks to AGFPC and your Frankenfeld and Jack Mann to be able to see if this type of technology would help us. I certainly hope so. I certainly think so. In any event, we just had a wrong number down in terms of the Krebs project. This just corrects us now. 4.3. Resolution to authorize a transfer of funds and establishing revenues and increasing appropriations in Highway Garage Capital Project Fund number 208. All right, this is just a switch over to where we knew where it was to put it where we needed it. This is something we knew three years ago, but now it's time to move it forward so we can pay for our garage. We plan the garage in a manner that we could pay for it, and so we saved for it, and um, we did not want to take out a bond that would become a burden to folks later down the road. The economy could get worse. Some are predicting it will. All right, we want to be as flexible and agile as possible with our budget. We do not want to be burdened with things because a bond, you don't have any choice. You have to pay it. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't create it, then you don't have to pay it. So it gives us the flexibility of dealing with economic downturns in a lot more efficient manner that the public, I think, will appreciate if we go there. Hopefully we never go there, but if we do, we're trying to prepare us for the worst case scenario. In any event, this is just shifting money over where we anticipated to go all along. 4.4. Resolution authorizing acceptance of $5,000 donation from Warren County Safe and Quality Bicycling Organization Inc. towards halfway Brook trail signage. All right, uh, and I want to thank the Warren County Safe and Quality Bicycle Organization uh, for this donation, for signage, for the Halfway Brook Trail. That's nice that they made this offer, and the town could use it. The uh, signage is not as cheap as you think it is. Uh, for the sake of disclosure, both Harrison Freer and I are on the board, 
And I think perhaps we should probably recuse ourselves just for the sake of, we don't have to, we don't have any money we're making out of this, but for the sake of absolute transparency and uh, uh, independency, I think we should do that, but. In which case the resolution won't have, right. Oh, because we don't have enough voters. All we have to do is disclose it, right? We don't. I'd be very comfortable with disclosure. All right, then we'll go to Plan B, disclosing it and, uh, and making sure we're open and transparent that way. All right, thank you for bringing that to my attention. I should have thought of that myself. Four point five. Resolution setting public hearing on proposed amendment to Ordinance Number Thirty and its subsequent amendments concerning increase in fees associated with the building permit process. All right. Occasionally, every so often, we don't want it to go ten years and then have big fee increases. We want to increase uh, the fees. For example, uh, accessory structure. It was 20 cents per square foot. Um, we're going to go to 23 cents a square foot for the purpose of uh, a fee schedule. If you come in, not expensive. A cell tower was $150. Now being proposed at 165. A shed, um, 301 plus square feet. This is garage fee. It was 75, we're thinking of making it, we're proposing to make it 85. Solar panels was 75, we're thinking of making 85, proposing to do 85. Uh, pavilion, pole bar, canopy, 75, 85 is the proposed amount. In other words, small increases in our fee schedule uh, from the building coast department. We're not having we're not acting on this other than to set the public hearing for December 7th. So I'm just wanting to give the public a little idea of the fee schedule. There's more there, but I'm not going to go through all of it, but there's generally small increases that are increases needed to cover the costs. They help cover the cost. They don't cover all the costs, but they do help cover the costs. So we'll have a public hearing on this if this town board approves this resolution on December 7th. 4.6. It's a resolution authorizing amendment of town water department water rate schedule. All right. Water use rates and fees. Again, small increases. Uh, amount of water from 0 to 8,000 gallons. We currently charge 30. This is proposing 30 to 50. So another $2.50. 8,001 8, gallons to 3.25 million gallons is $2.20 per thousand gallons. It was or is proposed to be 225. And then in the over 3.25 million gallons is 78 cents per thousand gallons. We only have two users there. That's West Mountain and the Great Escape. And we're proposing to make that 85 cents per thousand gallons. And the quarterly flat fee is currently uh, 135. We would make it 145 if this resolution passed. 4.7. Resolution adopting new tapping fee schedule for town water department. All right, tapping fee schedule. Uh, tap size three quarter inch. Okay, it was, so well it is, $375. This proposes 400 uh, three quarter inch long, 375. This proposes to make it 400. Uh, one inch short is 575. This proposal is 600. One inch long is 575. This proposal is 600. One and a half inch short is 780. This proposal is 805. Same thing with the long. Two inch uh, is proposing to go from $1,000 to 1050 So small increases, but again, to help face the cost. 4.7. 4.8. Resolution authorizing water rate increase for Shore Colony Water District. All right. Uh, to increase the flat rate from 175 annually to 200 annually, and I understand it's been a lot of time since we've increased Shore Colony's rate, so that is to help pay for the cost of the water district. Again, small increase. 4.9. Resolution affirming and ratifying purchase of skid steer loader for use by highway department. Okay, well this town board already approved the skid loader. 
uh, what happened. And Highway Superintendent Dave Dool is here, and Dave, do you mind if I ask you to just explain uh, what happened here? Yes, uh, Dave Duell, Donna Queensbury Highway Superintendent. Uh, the skid steer loader, we entered into agreement with uh, a vendor to purchase uh, the machine. We were guaranteed it was available to us in the time frame that we had to purchase and pay for the machine. Uh, the vendor could not ultimately deliver that model machine, even though we were guaranteed and we had entered into a, an agreement to purchase. Um, so they offered to uh, upgrade the machine at no cost to the town um, in good faith. Uh, All right, but this isn't the same machine. It's a better machine, but it's not the same machine. So this board, because it's not the same machine, still have to prove it even if it's an upgrade. Yes, correct. Okay. And that's what this resolution is all about. Mm -hmm. It's the purchase of a 230, uh, we already authorized the purchase of the 232 D3. Yes. And we're getting for the same price, the better model, the 242D3. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. Uh, 410. Order setting public hearing concerning extension to Queensbury Consolidated Water District to serve a portion of Mountain Terrace Estate, subdivision, and out of district, and then out of district parcel. All right. There are six parcels. They're calling them the Mountain Terrace Estate Subdivision. They're all along those urn routes. They were never put into the water district. This is a proposal to put them in the water district. There's a map plan and report that's been done and so forth. And there are there's plenty of water there. And the superintendent already confirmed that, so that's not a problem. So this resolution is to set a public hearing on this map to extend the water district to those six lots on Luzerne Road called the Mountain Terrace Estate Subdivision. That public hearing is being proposed December 7th if this town board approves this resolution. We'll have that public hearing. And 411. Resolution approving out of bills, warrant 11, 17, 2020. Okay. Run date of uh, November 12th and a payment date of November 17th, 2020 to only $919,737.61. 4-12. Resolution ratifying adoption of revised Town of Queensbury COVID-19 pand pandemic response plan. Okay. So this is an updated plan. And it's updated in a few areas, but the primary area of this has been updated is with the uh, travel policy. So we follow the travel policy set by New York State. It's the travel advisory, actually. We've adopted this. This is adopting the same travel advisory, plus each of the departments has their own COVID plans as part of our main plan. We've been commended from several different sources and authorities for our COVID planning here at the town of Queensbury. Uh, this is one where, you know, if an employee travels, uh, they have to come back. Of course, this gets reported to the Warren County Health Department. And um, they need to be tested. And uh, in three days, you have the test results back. And if it's negative, COVID negative, you can return to work. You're expected to return to work. If it's positive, then you have to quarantine for two months, two weeks. Excuse me. Probably will be two months. Two weeks. Um, so it also says um, that town employees travel. It's a decision they make. They will be expected to use their leave time, that is the vacation, sick days, personal days, voting holidays, etc., or the required quarantine time. Now, if you have no leave days, you use them all up. 
then you're not going to get paid for those days you have to stay out for quarantine because you made the choice to travel. This is not a case of where you got a community spread. That's not the case because then you have exemption. This is the case where you've made the decision to travel, you can return back to COVID positive. All right, now, and I also said to the town board, and I only got one response back, so I left it. Uh, employees have asked me if they can allow at home work. In other words, they don't have to use the leave time, and they'll still get paid for the day. Well, there's not all employees can do that. So I said, fine, I'll put the clause in there saying you can do it, but that must be approved by the top board. In other words, we would take a look at the individual, can that individual actually do that work from home in a comprehensive full-time manner, then we'll give them credit. We won't let them use the lead base, but we'll have to look at this each individually and it'll be a top board decision. Okay, so that's in there. So that's the plan. 413. Resolution to amend 2020 budget. All right, let's just the shift. Yeah, let's keep the shift over there. Changing time. All right, those are the 13 resolutions before us. Any member of the public present wish to speak to any of those 13 resolutions before the town board tonight? None present. Any member of the uh, watching YouTube wish to call in, ask a question, share a thought, excuse me, on any of the resolutions before us tonight? Any folks on Zoom? There's only two left. I guess I heard them to death going through the resolution. All right, if you're on YouTube, you want to call in and share a thought on any of the 12 resolutions, it's area code 518-761-8225. Okay, I'm hearing no interest on behalf of the public on our, our 13 resolutions before us. Are there any uh, resolutions that top board members wish to speak to or have pulled or will hold up? Just to reiterate on 4.4, full disclosure, uh, I serve on, uh, um, on the board, board of directors. Yeah, the Warren County, County State, State Quality Organization. Or they're trying to rebrand themselves as the Adirondack uh, Cycling Advocates. Right. The Warren County State Quality Bicycle Organization is in the long same mission. All right, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 4.1 through 413. I'll introduce. Moved by Council Person Medivere, seconded by Council Person Brown. We'll all fall vote on those 13 resolutions. Council Person Freer. Yes. Brown. Yes. Stroud. Yes. And Medivere. Yes. All right. They pass. <clears throat> Uh, all right, now comes privilege to the floor. Any member of the public that wishes to speak to the town board about the town issue, this is your opportunity. Any member of the Dave? Dave Dwell, Town of Queensbury Highway Superintendent. I just want to take a few uh, moments to acknowledge the passing of uh, William. Bill Hughes Sr. on Sunday, November 15th. Uh, Bill was a 37-year employee of the Highway Department, <clears throat> um, and he was uh, instrumental in my uh, employment with the town. Uh, it was a day in January in 1989. I ran into Bill in the doctor's office, and he said, Dave, what are you up to? I said, oh, not too much. He says, what are you doing for work? I says, uh, currently, Bill, I'm unemployed. I got laid off Christmas Eve day. And he said, well, we're looking for a part-time wing guy. He said, why don't you come up and fill out your application? And I did so. And here I stand today as a superintendent of the highway department, which I want to thank Bill for that. Um, so, yeah, I just want to offer our uh, thoughts and prayers on my behalf in the highway department to Bill and his family um, at this time. So, and on behalf of the community, thank you. Uh, I want to remind 
family that we deeply appreciate the, the good for our community, making a much nicer place that Bill did. I'm very sorry for having up at past. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Anybody on Zoom? Anybody on YouTube? If you're on YouTube, we should call in. Very cool. Yes, Laura, go ahead. Yes. Laura Scott. I wonder if there was anything that we could do about the deer problem on Assembly Point. We seem to be overrun by deer, and with the tick population and the deer population, uh, is there anything you can do? I have to, I have called in Albany. I have spoken to different people in Warrensburg. Uh, no one seems to have a solution. No, Florence and I too made those phone calls. Six of them. Well, because the first one said that I needed to speak to so-and-so. And when I spoke to so-and-so, they said, oh, no, you need to speak to so-and-so. So I called the second so-and-so, and they said, oh, no, it's not me. You need to speak to so-and-so. A six phone call, Florence. I finally got, I'm sorry. I finally got, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I called and I said, well, can we do such and such? Can we can we shoot them? Well, I can't shoot them. Can we uh, anesthetize them and take them somewhere else? Oh, no, we'll be taking germs somewhere else. Uh, there's always an excuse, so I'd like to hear the excuse they gave you. Well, I was asking because I had a, a, a assembly point person ask me, they said, at least could it be posted the signage uh, that they're going to be hunting in, in the, how do you pronounce that, Tony? Orioppa. Whatever Tony said. <laughs> and um, so they said, well, their bow hunting is allowed in there, and that's most likely what they would do, uh, both regular bow and crossbow. They said anything else would probably be illegal because of the proximity to residential areas. But so I understand that there is a hunting season. It's it. He told me what it was, and it is on the DEC website what the hunting season is for bows. So they would be allowed to be in there hunting the deer with bows, and uh, because there is an apparent need to control the population because we do get the nuisance calls and there being too many deers in everyone's backyard eating the garbage and everything else and the deer population needs to be controlled there. So there is some honey allowed, but I understand it's only bow honey. Yes, and they only shoot maybe one, maybe two. Yeah. I, I suggest that they anesthetize them and shoot them right where they are. And they said, no, they couldn't do that. And I said, and then feed them to the, uh, to the home, uh, I don't know, the, the home people that they feed food to. And they said, no, they couldn't shoot them because maybe the anesthetizing um, juice had gotten into their bloodstream and it wouldn't be good meat to eat. So you name it, they've got an excuse for it. But meanwhile, um, they are there, and you can see 15 of them in a bunch sometimes, and they're too many. Yes, well, hopefully this gets out to the bow hunters, and they go up and help you with the problem. <laughs> okay, we'll advertise next year. All right, okay. Thank you, Flora. Anything else? Well, thank, thank, thank you for being there and giving us your time. And um, we, we really do appreciate you that we don't often say so. Well, we appreciate that. We remain servant to you. All right, have a good night. Anybody Thank else? You. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else on Zoom? All right, so that just about does it for uh, our uh, privilege of the floor.
Let's move on to town board discussions and let's start with George. Wow. And this is a good week to have me go first because I get to beat up the other guys about wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Aww. <laughs> but uh, I guess there's been a lot in the news about, you know, our all celebrating this holiday and coming together. And uh, I just think we all need to continue to do what we've been doing all along, you know, where we have to remain distant, wear our masks. I know that's tough when we're, we're together in the home and, and, and celebrating a holiday, but just try to be as safe as we possibly can and we'll get through these uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas and into 2021. That's all I've got. I'm a little bit worried about the, well, the get-togethers for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know what that's going to do in October. I know. January is probably going to not be good, along well, with New Year's Day, but we'll keep this tempered a little bit because 11 o'clock New Year's Day, you're going to be right here. <laughs> yeah, we do the first of the year resolutions and uh, and swearing in, as a matter of fact, because Tim McNulty's here, uh, and he'll get sworn in on January 1st if you're here. So, um, um, and Eric uh, Schweiker will uh, swear him in as returning town judge. Anything else, George? That's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Harrison? Nope. But uh, well, just let me say that it was good to hear that a second vaccine uh, for COVID is uh, 94 plus percent effective in the uh, initial test. So, uh, there seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel to get back to a more reasonable or normal situation. So I'm hopeful about that. But uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. There's this other new form of or new vaccine. Does that have to be stored at 90 degrees? No. No, minus 20 and it can stay in your refrigerator for a month. Oh, all right. My daughter gave me the rundown on it today. She knows more about it than I do, that's for sure. Anything else, Harrison? Nope. All right, thank you. No, Thanks. just the same for me. Just wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I don't know if it's going to be possible this year. It's certainly a different uh, year than we've ever been used to. My, my daughter out in Boston. Um, you know, I don't know if she'll be able to leave it and come home at this point. But we'll see what happens. But happy Thanksgiving, just the same. Yes, thank you. All right, I have a small file. Uh, the rules, all right. There's Leon Steve Preserve at the end of division. There is the Hudson Point Preserve and Trail adjacent to Leon Steve, so we're in the Hudson River area. There's the Rush Pond Trail. There's the Lower Watershed, which is the new Epley Brook Trail. Those areas, those parklands, those preserves, those watersheds are not for ATVs and dirt bikes. They're not for those types of things. They are prohibited. And so I'm just, you know, I'm supposed to remind people that in those areas I just mentioned, ATVs and dirt bikes, those type of, of motorized vehicles are not allowed. They are not allowed. Okay. I said, would you make an announcement? Maybe you make a difference. We don't have to go and arrest everybody. We'll just abide by it. Well, it may take time. Okay. Also, we get these, you know, we have some, we're very lucky to have some outstanding organizations associated with Lake George. You have the Fund for Lake George, you have the LGA, the Lake George Park Commission, Lake George Land Conservancy, the Darren Freshwater Institute, we have the Jefferson Project going on, and we do receive bulletins from those and it gives us updates as to what we're, what they're doing. In the LGA news, uh, Walt Lander talks about forging ahead 
He's the executive director. Uh, Kristen Wild, also, she's the director of education, and she goes out to local schools. And they have a nice article on what is hydrilla. And it's a darn good thing that we don't have it in Lake George. I know other states have uh, hydrilla problems, and it's costing millions to control. Hydrilla will grow an inch a day. Uh, and it will cloud out everything and destroy habitats. We don't want it. That's why we have the boat inspection stations, and everyone's alert to it. But the other things that the Lake George Association has done, they put in a diffuser pond. They put in a sediment basin with clean outs. They're installing porous uh, concrete sidewalks, experimenting with that. Uh, they did a nice project up on Boom Bay and Putnam with the swale clean out. And the list goes on of all the good things that they do for Lake George. And the same thing with the Lake George Land Conservancy. And they have their newsletter for the fall and winter of 2020 they put out. And all the good things that they're doing. Of course, they conserve land keep it from getting developed. It's human development that causes pollution. Mother Nature just has a beautiful system. If you left it alone, it works. Doesn't pollute anything. Everything remains in harmony. It only took a few million years to develop it. Human giant can go in and destroy that balance real quick. All right, so the more that we keep Lake George natural and preserve in a natural way, the better the water quality is going to be. And Lake George Land Conservancy works to do that. And they talk about the um, Woldigid outbreak. Um, and they're on top of it. I know the LGA is on top of it. And I know the Fund for Lake George. The Fund for Lake George has asked us for, what, six or 7,000 contribution for um, their Bite the Woldigid efforts. I think I set that out a couple weeks ago. If there's support for that, then I'll put together a resolution. And we'll put in our share. We already do. We put $30,000 in towards the bulk inspection system. Uh, you know, and it was mentioned tonight. Town of Queensbury is very proactive when it comes to the environment. Uh, so, and so I just want to thank these organizations. They're all doing great things. Also, Dave's here. And I do, Dave, have people that appreciate your efforts. <laughs> I know that <laughs> you hear just the opposite. Uh, uh, here's one. Thank you for repairing the two catch basins and the 60-foot new culvert pipe and um, the drainage swale and um, on somebody's driveway, I don't want to mention their name, but you probably know uh, like Klein Avenue. They're very thankful for what you did over there. Um, and Ash Drive, I got not only an email, but I got a comment from people that live over on Ash Drive thanking you for your stormwater control that you just implemented over there. And, you know, Dave and his guys are busy, 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 busy. And I think most people do appreciate your efforts. Not everybody takes the time to write. I get it. I mean, we get paid for being public servants. and But it is nice hearing things that people do appreciate it. We are trying to make a very better place to live. All right, and that's it for me tonight. Anything else we go to the order? So um, the speed signs that we talked about the other day, are we collecting data and they're working now? They're working. They're, they're all working and they're up and working now. I'll yeah. be curious to see what kind of data we get out. They told me I was going too fast. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> well, that's good. I wasn't ready for it. If you hit the exact mileage, it tells you you're going too fast. So if it's 35, you just hit that 35. It I wasn't going too, too fast. No, I was doing like 38, but it was flashing at me. So. Yeah. So I think they're working. Yes. And I see people slow down. I'm seeing the brakes in front of me. So they're working. The one on Sweet Road, when you turn off of uh, Country Club, I think is too close to the corner. Yeah, it is George 
about that too yeah. when we put it there, but it is before the bike trail, so yeah. we wanted to have some kind of warning. So we were trying to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, right. it, it did slow me down, you know, but it's just hard to get going much faster than, right. than, than that. But. Yeah. All right. So I want to thank Joe Barlow and Jackson and Lux TV, Peter Faith, and Faith Productions. I want to thank the public for being here tonight, uh, both on YouTube, here physically, and uh, Zoom. And I want to thank Town Council Mark Shatner and uh, Deputy uh, Town Clerk uh, Rose Mellon. And Town Board members, thank you. Yes, Amanda McGee was feeling well, so she did the right thing, and bang home. All right. So I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Moved Thank by Councilman Perron, seconded by Councilperson Freer. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. Aye. Now adjourn. The following program is underwritten by the generous support of Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan Insurance. Since 1852, they have been assisting both businesses and individuals across the country secure the most comprehensive insurance products available. Associates of Glens Falls is proud to partner with Central Insurance Companies. Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian-American food since 1922, and Stored Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pennell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pennell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcomed. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pinnell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Most cybersecurity firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech. Your technology, our passion.